This is another short example that will show how to access the register map information for an AXI IP and why this is useful when prototyping your pink design. Again, I'm using the same hardware design as the last examples with three AXI IP. When a pink overlay is instantiated, the register map information for all AXI IP in the design is parsed from the hardware description file that forms part of a pink overlay. The register map is a property of the Python object for the IP. We'll start by checking the register map for the AXI GPIO IP. This is the IP we used in the previous example. We'll see some register information. The IP has two GPIO channels with a data register and tri-state register for each channel and some interrupt registers. We can see some register information. This IP has two GPIO channels with a data register and tri-state register for each channel. It also has some interrupt registers. I'm going to switch and look at the register information for the AXI timer I have in this design, as I think it makes for a slightly more interesting example. I'll create an alias and then check the register information. We have two timers in this IP. If we check help, we can see descriptions for the registers. We have a control and status register for each timer, counter, which will hold the timer's counter value, and a load register, which allows an initial value to be loaded. If we needed to, we could check the user guide for more details. I've included a link to the user guide book. For this example, I've added some notes in my notebook indicating what each bit in the control and status register represents. Let me create a handle for that control and status register and let me read back that information again. We now see the values for each bit in this register. MDT indicates the timer mode. Zero is generate, or if you like, it's in the simple counter mode. UDT indicates if we're counting up or down, so currently set to zero, so we're going to count up. ARHT is auto reload. We will use this. It is currently set to zero, which means the timer will reach its max value, loop back and hold and ENT is the timer enable and currently set to zero. So let's read back all the timer information again. In particular, let's look at the count register and the value of this register is currently set to zero and that makes sense as the timer is currently disabled. So let's go ahead and enable this timer and if I read back that information again, you can see we now have a value in this count register. And if we rerun this multiple times, you should see this value incrementing. Because we've set auto reload to zero, um, the counter is 32 bits. So as it reaches two to the power of 32, it will carry and loop back around to zero and hold on this value. So let me change this ARHT value. We can see if I go back to here, you can see it's currently set to zero. So I'm gonna set it to one and read back the timer information again. And we can see that auto reload value has changed and the counter is now counting again if I rerun this multiple times. And if I let it run for a few more seconds, you'll see that as we reach that maximum value, the counter loops back around. And if we disable the timer and read back the information again, we can see that the timer is that the timer is no longer enabled. We have a value in the count register and if I rerun this code a couple of times, you can see that this value is no longer changing, the timer is no longer running. So in conclusion, you've seen how the register map information for AXI IP can be accessed. If you're developing your own IP or using a Xilinx or third-party IP, having access to the register information on the target as you're writing code is a real advantage. Being able to check register information and read back register values in real time can help with development, debug and verification and significantly increase productivity. It can also help as you port IP between different designs and platforms.